Hello there, and we've had another weekend where Manchester United have won a game. Wow! Yes. Who'd have, who'd have thought? Yeah, yeah. I'm hosting, so I just I can, <laughs> I can I can ask Jamie how happy he is. Six two against Leeds, convincing. And firstly, to you, Jamie, now are United title contenders? Genuinely, are they title contenders? Yeah. Uh, ta- I mean, the table would say yes, but I'm still not sure. Um, I, I, I think because of how inconsistent we can be, but we're, we're very consistent in the last few weeks in the Premier League. I mean, let's forget about Europe. That didn't happen. Uh, but ah. when you look at it, <laughs> I really wish I didn't say that. <laughs> um, but, Europa League first day. <laughs> oh, God. Not that again. Send the youth. Send the youth. We don't need to do that. Uh, but looking at the Premier League, it's... I, I get, you know, because when you beat, a, I mean, Leeds, I don't understand why Leeds got so much praise over that game. They lost 6-2. Um, <laughs> they got battered. And yet they still talked about them saying, oh, they played really well. I'm thinking, hang on, they conceded six. Um, so come on, calm down. Um, but I, I think in terms, of the, in terms of the title, why not? Why not? I don't, I'm not that convinced yet because the problem I have with United is, is our defence. Um, and I think if you really want to contend with the likes of Liverpool and Man City uh, for the league, you have to be consistent, you have to be clinical, because that's what Liverpool and Man City's standards have been in the last few years. Uh, rarely slip up in terms of points. They most of the time win their games. Um, even if they have a really bad day, they still get the win. But United's defence is what worries me. I, when you watch Lindelof and Maguire together on Sunday... There were still so many patches where you think, good God, thank God with three or four goals up, boys, they could turn it, turn this around um, if Leeds had the, had the quality to do it. So for me, I don't see why not, but it's one game at a time and there's lots of games to go as much as I'd love to get cocky and jump on that champagne bottle. So, that yeah. were for once actually contending. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're only 13 games in. Well, for United, 13 games in. And that's an unlucky to- number sometimes. 26, 13. I'm going to go to you, Joe, and I know we all know you're a Liverpool fan, so do you think Man United can run Liverpool to the end till April, till May, or is this, or is it unlikely, let's just say? Well, I'm, I'm going to be careful to not be uh, yeah. saying anything too dodgy just in case it comes back to bite me because we've been there before. Uh, I think Manchester United at the moment look like they could be in the title race. What is it? The five points behind Liverpool with a game in hand to win that, two points behind... I think he came in hands against Burnley, mm-hmm. possibly. I think yes, yes, it is. it is. So that's winnable, easily winnable for Manchester United. It's it's one of those. Uh, didn't see it coming at the start of the season. Still didn't see it coming. Now uh, you look at the table, you're like mad. Man United could be two points off us uh, coming into you know New Year or whenever they play that that game in hand. I think I'd be interested to see how they manage when February comes around and European football starts begin with the Thursday to Sunday schedule because that does take a lot out of the teams. But I wouldn't be surprised if Ollie does a bit of rotating and plays quite a few of the youngsters. Uh, like Jamie said in the WhatsApp group the, the other day, he would do personally, uh, play the youngsters in Europe and then obviously focus on the league. At the moment, you've got to say Manchester United could be title contenders. As a Liverpool fan, that pains me to say it because I'd like to see us uh, get number 20 uh, this season. Uh, what I said to Jamie the other day was 2009, uh, United beat Liverpool to the title by four points in what was, a tight, what was the tightest uh, title race at the time and levelled it up at 18 Or Wouldn't it be poetic if Liverpool in 2021 beat United to the title by X amount of points and made it 20 all? Well, I was about we'll to see. mention, though, with Liverpool squad, we know the injuries for Benio's at centre-back. Etc. Etc. We don't need to reiterate it too many times. But when you look at the bench of Bay, Cavani, Greenwood, Henderson, Mata, Nat, uh, Matic, Pogba, Tellers, and Van der Beek, surely as a Liverpool fan, I I, I know we can question Ollie for whatever reason, and maybe Klopp's better manager and get get it over the line because he's a better manager. But surely with that bench and the position they find themselves in, you've got to think that they are contenders. Would you Would you agree on that fact that their squad depth actually now starts to look okay? Uh, yeah, it's a pretty solid bench and the squad depth looks okay. Certain players aren't playing up to their standards and you know my opinion on Paul Pogba. 
I think he's, uh, he's been playing is well appalling. recently, though. That's the thing. He's been he's yeah because he's after a move. Yeah, exactly. Whenever yeah, exactly. the transfer window comes around, he starts playing all right for a couple of games. Say he comes to the end of January, and nobody's brought him. He drop back off again because that's exactly. what Paul Pogba does. He, exactly. he doesn't really, he doesn't care about the club. He doesn't care about the fans to to a certain degree. He all he cares about is lying in his pocket full of money and getting what he wants. He doesn't really care at the end of the day. He's a mercenary. And, but enough on Paul Pogba. As regards to Manchester United, you've got a decent second choice goalkeeper in Dean Henderson, who probably could potentially push De Gea in years to come. And if you believe Jamie Burgoyne is the best goalkeeper in the world, uh, <laughs> well, against Sheffield United, he didn't prove a lot, did he? And again, he's not he's not really done it for me this season yet because errors and errors. But that's a different matter. I, I Bay is a solid defender as well. I'd take him in the Liverpool squad as that, one of I was our choices. Get that, yeah, Bay is yeah, also. But, he see, should be I, a starter I, in some teams. I think Twan Zebi should be starting. I mean, I, I, I was, I was watching the game the other day, and I keep, I, I keep saying to myself, Lindelof for me needs to prove a point, um, and I don't, I'm not seeing it. Lindelof makes a lot well, of mistakes, scored. I think. <laughs> well, yeah, of course he did. But look at that. I mean, I'm sorry, Leeds are crap. So anyone who goes on about Leeds being a great side, they uh, need a lot of improvement. No, Le- Leeds, but they're exciting to watch. But uh, yeah, but they're so overhyped. I, I I agree, and also the fact that Bielsa was up for coach of the year, I think, was a bit of a. You see, a stretch. now I'm starting to understand what why you ranted about that because yeah, now I'm, I'm, I'm not happy it. whatsoever. Well, mainly because <laughs> my favourite guy Gasparini didn't get a shout in or Nagelsmann, but that's a different matter. This is just <laughs> Leeds. And surely with the, Euro- I mean, good enough squad, well, good enough squad, a thick squad, a deep squad, surely young players will come in because it's Manchester United. Rashford is a is starter because he got chances in the Europa League. Could this be another chance for United to bring in a young, another young player? And this can just make United push that bit on. I, mean, I think it could mean that they could push for the league if they do give maybe more young players a chance. Well, I mean, United made a couple of signings back in back in the uh, transfer window. Um, there was the Uruguayan winger, and uh, he's been playing in the youth games quite a lot recently. And he's been awesome from the, the footage I've been seeing. You know, very quick, de- decent winger. Kind of reminds me of Daniel James, though, where, yes, you're fast and you've got skill, but you, you hopefully he's not the Daniel James that I think of, who I think's crap. Personally, but I think he's uh, got no technique, has he? He's, he's, he's got no te- I, exactly. I, I, he just I, runs. I mean, and even, hopes even for the, the goal best. he got the other day, everyone said he needed it, but he, that was a scuffed shot. On his that was just foot. lucky. There's a yeah, scuffed exactly. shot. On his foot. It's, it, I mean, exactly, yeah, and he was right at the keeper. Yeah, a decent, well, a, a better the, goalkeeper that wouldn't have gone in. But I think that, that's a harsh. I think Melly is very underrated this season. He has saved Leeds so much. But um, I do, but I, but I do think. You know, there's the Uruguayan, and there's one that we're getting from Atalanta, who's 18, mm-hmm. and he should be coming in January. So, more. Europe League is perfect for that, isn't it? It's it's more players, more depth. But at some point, it becomes a nightmare for someone like Solskjaer. Because I still think about the whole Van der Beek transfer and think, if Pogba does go, you know, maybe this whole Van der Beek transfer was actually a lot better than it looks because... Maybe he will get more game time. I don't know. It, I don't know if Joe saw it last night, but on Monday Night Football, Gary Neville said the player to watch out for next year is Paul Pogba. And it's like, oh, here we go again. Gary, let it go. But he seems there are to have still have faith. to be watching out for him, aren't there? I mean, there is. I can is see it, why I mean, he means. We're talking just on an entertainment factor. That, that Who knows? I mean, Paul's always who providing knows? entertainment, isn't he? Yeah. I was going to mention also the if we take um, how much how many points Manchester United are on track to get. So, for instance, they've, they've got 26 points at the moment after 13 games. That means that at the end of the season, if it all continues in the same fashion, they'll be on 76 points. If they're on 76 points and they win the title, hypothetically, that would be the second lowest amount of points to win a title. Below Leicester, it would be Manchester United in 96-97 who got 75 points that season. So, mm. no matter what, this is, looking like for an, this is starting to look like a very low-scoring season. Even relegation. I mean, look, look at Sheffield United. They've got two points, and that's a record at the bottom of the table. I'm yeah. wondering where this. So this also probably means that the fight for the Champions League will be a lot tighter than usual. We look now even at the table, and you've got Tottenham who are um, who are sixth, one point off fourth. Usually, it's not this close, and I, I'm just curious to see how it pans out. I, I feel. I think Joe may agree with me on this. Where Liverpool know they've got the capability of winning every game. 
um, even between now and the end of the season, which may sound a bit daft, but they, they, they've got a team that have the experience and have the goals and defensively great. I mean, look at what they did on Saturday. That was a statement. That was the first proper Liverpool win of the season for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it came at just the right time, near the midway point, where the block, as I said in the group chat the other day, they're starting to get out the blocks and now they're five points clear because of it. Goal difference would have helped them big time as well, the 7-0. Um, and, I, and I just think for, for United, Liverpool, when you mentioned the lowest points to win the league and all that, Seb, all those daft, stupid facts. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, I'm only joking. I love you, Seb. I love you. But what I would say is that I think for United, they would like to win it like that, where Liverpool would be like, no, go full, out, full on out and try and play till the end of the season like this. But the injuries could kill Liverpool. Um, and set them back a bit. But, you know, Klopp is known to adapt um, over the last five or six years, and he's, I'm sure he'll do it again. So Liverpool, in my eyes, are still the favourites. But, you know, bring it on. United, Liverpool title race. You know, everyone goes on about this rivalry, but we haven't had a proper rivalry in years. In years. You know, we don't even play each other in Europe. So it's like, just little things like that. We don't really have that. We have a rivalry, but it's not like we want it to be. So you it's see hard to play each other in Europe, Jamie, when we're in the Champions League. Oh, here we go. I've got yeah, I've had that for years. Do you see anyone I've else? I've had that for years. Do you see anyone else pushing, Joe? Apart, I mean, if we're talking Manchester United. Liverpool look like they're starting to get that into into gear. Do you see any other team pushing Liverpool close? Because I think Liverpool now are running away with it. Do you see another team apart from Man United who we've mentioned? Do you Couple see weeks. Team putting putting him under pressure. Sorry, uh, a couple of weeks ago I would have said Tottenham, but they seem to have just faltered a little bit. Whether that's just a blip and they'll get back into their their role again, I'm not sure. Um, I still wouldn't fully rule out Chelsea. I know they've got a little bit of inconsistency. They're in, good Chelsea, but when they're on it, they're on it, and they're going to be a force to reckon. With. They're definitely top four this season. Uh, I still wouldn't 100 percent rule out Manchester City. Still wouldn't 100 percent rule it out because if they get on one of their runs. It's unstoppable. Best defence in the league, Man City. That, the, the thing with Manchester City is that everyone's saying that they're on a rebuilding stage, which I can sort of see. But even with that, they've still got the quality in their squad to push Liverpool because they I were think, in, in said building stage last season. <laughs> I think I think Man City, if they get top four, it's a good season for them. I know mm. that seem, may seem a bit daft, but what's up front for them? Well, I don't Jenny's see the threat. Out. Yeah, but I don't. I feel like it is a build again for Man City where... Pep has signed the extension, so he's clearly ready for it. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's his plan now to just obviously keep improving this team as much as he can. But people like Gabriel Aces get out, get on the boat, head off somewhere else because it because it doesn't work. He can't play for Man City. He's not good enough. He reminds me of Anthony Martial. Has a big name, but doesn't really do it for me. Uh, I'd agree. I think Jesus is not good enough to lead a Manchester a team that's pushing for the title. I just don't think so. No. So, what are your opinions? Who do you think will push Liverpool close? Is it going to be Manchester United, Manchester City, maybe Tottenham? Let us know, like, comment and subscribe as usual and we'll see you in the next video.